Hi, Abundant Harvest Church. I'm excited to bring to you this announcement in terms of regathering. The leadership team has been in discussion and in prayer as we've looked at the situation we find ourselves in. And so I want to read to you an official statement that we have put together that is a statement about regathering and our time frame and what that will look like. The last several weeks have been historic. We have lived through an enormous amount of emotional strain caused from every direction. Stay-at-home orders, unemployment, employment at essential businesses, fear, the opinion of others, school closures, media, and the list goes on. However, despite it all, the true church of Jesus Christ continues to shine strong and is doing well in the midst of a global pandemic. Churches care about people more than any government ever will. Because of this, most churches in Pennsylvania felt it best to voluntarily stop in-person gatherings to join the fight against COVID-19 in the early days when there was little understanding of this virus. This temporary pause in gatherings has been successful as the curve has been flattened. We now have gained valuable data on the virus and its effect on the populace that we desperately needed. Churches in Pennsylvania were never forced to stop meeting in person. We were only strongly encouraged. The government does not have the right to forbid churches from meeting in person. Pennsylvania has not arrested pastors and is not sending police out to investigate churches. In fact, many churches across our state have continued to meet in person while taking the recommended precautions involved with social distancing. However, despite the best of technology, a pause in church assembly in person can only last for a brief period at most. As Jake Kale, author, speaker, and the lead pastor of Threshold Church said, quote, social distancing is ultimately incompatible with Christianity. In other words, it is impossible to adhere to social distancing guidelines and fulfill basic Christian practices, end quote. We are nearing the end of this pause. The discussion surrounding the length of the pause has been incredibly complex. Churches are trying to find balance in obeying the Lord, having concern for public health and safety, tending to the spiritual, physical, and emotional needs of their congregations, honoring unprecedented governmental orders, processing the ever-changing information and misinformation surrounding the virus, and the strong and varied opinions of the public. Despite what the public may think, there is not a simple and easy, one-size-fits-all answer for churches. The government and much of the public believe that online church is equivalent to in-person church. However, all of the following foundational practices inherent to who we are as believers of Jesus cannot be accomplished effectively in the midst of social distancing water baptism, receiving communion together, laying on of hands for leadership, anointing, healing, and commissioning, assembling together, corporate prayer, fellowship with one another, anointing the sick with oil, worshiping together in song. All of these are foundational practices for us as believers of Jesus Christ. It is disastrous if the church begins to slip in its commitment to any one of these foundations, naturally they are to be protected and practiced, even in spite of danger and opposition. The persecuted church does not stop doing these things because they might be beaten, imprisoned, or killed. Why? Because as the church, these things define us. The idea that the church can stop meeting in person for long periods of time is simply unfounded. One of the most grievous aspects of this pandemic has been watching believers belittle and undermine churches who have continued to meet or who are making steps to reopen before the government lifts all restrictions. These individuals fail to see the complexity of this situation and recognize that churches are truly essential. The media has enjoyed highlighting the few cases of virus transfer as a result of church assembly. It is time we stop the blanket statements such as, quote, if Christians really loved their neighbor, they wouldn't go to church. Or 
If you don't comply with all the government's orders, you must want people to die. People need grace. Churches need grace. We must all understand the answers are not simple. If churches choose to remain online, they must not be judged as not having enough faith. If churches choose to regather, they must not be judged for their convictions to serve people in a wise and safe manner. Each church is in a unique situation based on the demographics of the congregation, the population, the COVID-19 cases, etc., etc. After much prayer, discussion, consideration of governmental recommendations, and counsel, the leadership team of Abundant Harvest Church has made the decision to regather in person starting Sunday, May 17th. We believe the time is right to provide this option for those in our church family who choose to worship together in person. The leadership team has agreed upon several modifications to our weekly gathering in order to provide utmost safety for all. We understand that many will still be uncomfortable with regathering at this time and will prefer to engage via the online platforms of Facebook and YouTube. We support this choice. Furthermore, we strongly encourage anyone with pre-existing medical conditions to continue engaging online. In conclusion, we are confident the time is right for Abundant Harvest Church to regather. Take note of upcoming temporary changes in our statement, Plan for Regathering, which will be posted. We support the decision to stay home for anyone with concern to regather. Thank you for your understanding and support as we do our best to be the Church of Jesus Christ in the midst of this pandemic. I want to bring to you and talk through our plan for regathering. This has been discussed by the leadership team and uh, it's available to you. I want to walk through it together just to clear misunderstandings. We have modified our service. So we intend to meet the needs of our congregation as well as divide our congregation for the purpose of social distancing and limiting the numbers at each service. At nine o'clock, we are going to have a family-only service. At 9 a.m., we're going to have a one-hour service, 9 to 10. This will be for families with nursery, children's church, and tween age children, 0 to 12. Parents will be responsible for their children in this service. Families will be seated together in the sanctuary. We will have live worship with children's songs and worship with Pastor Lauren, Miss Danielle will bring a message. It's going to be a great time, a service specifically for our children. This service will be live streamed on Facebook and YouTube if as a family you feel uncomfortable gathering for this service. There will be seating restrictions. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Then following that service, we're going to have our regular Sunday morning service starting at 11 a.m. That'll go from 11 to 12.30 this service is going to be for youth, age, and older. Worship will be our AHC worship team. I will bring a message to you from the Word of God. This service will also be live streamed on Facebook and YouTube. We will um, have this available with social distancing and safety measures in place as well. A couple modifications you need to be aware of. Our traditional warm AHC greeting will not happen. Also, we will not be passing the offering plate. We will be collecting and dropping offerings in a receptacle at the end of the service. We want to minimize as much as we're able any type of safety concern. We want our families to be safe in the midst of this deliberate decision to meet. We will be, in terms of seating, having ushers that assist in the seating of families and individuals. We will be blocking off every other row of chairs to maintain distance. And then in each row, between family groups, between groups of people, a minimum of at least two seats will be kept. 
all seating will be on a first come first serve basis. When our seating in the sanctuary is full, we will have some limited overflow seating in the meet and greet available on a TV stream so you can take part and watch and hear the service. Some general details, we will have hand sanitizer on campus. We're encouraging you to bring your own so that you can hand sanitize frequently. We encourage everyone to wash and hand sanitize every time um, they touch a door or, or interact with another person. And also, if you feel the need, you're welcome to wear face masks and gloves. We want you to know that that is welcomed as well. If during the service you feel the need to have personal ministry or prayer of any kind, we ask that you see an elder or a pastor as I specifically talk to them about safety guidelines in ministering to people. Any greeting that happens in the meet and greet, I want you to know there will not be handshakes, fist bumps, anything that involves physical contact. All greeting will be done in wisdom with social distancing in mind. And I also want to request our church family to be considerate of social distancing as you fellowship in the meet and greet. And also, please be considerate of the amount of time you spend in the meet and greet. We prefer that most people would greet outside the building, fellowship outside the building, especially with the service leaving and the new service coming. We will be cleaning the building between services. So we also need your help with clearing people out for traffic flow, for cleaning. We're going to be making sure that door handles, all surfaces are um, hand sanit or excuse me, um, cleaned and wiped down, sanitized between um, services and of course before and then after. There will not be coffee available. We will remove the pens from the back of the seats, anything that kids can be touching and playing with. So we are going to take extra precautions to make sure that safety is had for all. So again, I want to remind you 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. is the family service. Our regular service will start at 11 and go to around 1230. So be aware of those modifications. Be aware that there's going to be different um, practices in place. We ask you to cooperate. Please cooperate. Regardless of your opinion, we need to be considerate of the other person around. Again, if you have any pre-existing conditions, we ask that you stay home. If you have any concerns, please stay home. Engage online. We as a church were required to take this step because many in our congregation were needing to regather for their own spiritual, emotional health. So we're excited about this. Modifications are in place until further notice, and we look forward to what God does moving forward in our church body. God bless, and we'll see you on May 17th.